Ta-da! Hello Fantasy Gamers, Matthew here from Grey Army Gaming in lovely Leuven, Sweden. Today for this episode of A Few Simple Steps, we are going to show you how to make stone and grass courtyards. In order to lead off this video, I would just like to start by showing you the finished product of what we are going to be making today. Uh, it will be a stone and grass courtyard with uh, grayish brown stones and a nice uh, blended flock between the stones. Um, this will be a nice small square unit that you can place onto your wargaming uh, mats and which will be a, a nice complement to your terrain pieces. Now the supplies you're going to need for your courtyard, we can start out with this. As a base we're going to be using uh, somewhat a little bit thicker cardboard and the reason for that is we don't want it to bend and flex too much. Um, and what we'll do is we will be rounding off the corners here with sandpaper um, to give it a bit of a rounded effect so it's not so square. Then the next thing you want to do is get some um, thin cardboard. I'm just using um, cereal box uh, cardboard. Um, and what you want to do is get it roughly approximately the same size. We'll be cutting our stones out of here. Um, so you can lay, uh, lay it down on top of this and make sure it's approximately the same size. Uh, we'll be drawing our stones on there and cutting it out of there. Of course, gluing down our stones, uh, we're going to use just normal PVA white glue. And um, once you're done with that and that dries, we're going to throw on some uh, spackling, some normal filler that you'd use on your walls when you paint. Um, that will give a little bit of texture and roughness on the stones. Um, and once that dries, of course, we will be doing some painting with some normal gray paint and we will probably throw maybe a, a little bit of browns and reds in there as well, using some normal paint brushes to do that. Uh, when we are finished, we will go over in the cracks and on the edges and put on this dark green color as sort of a base coat between the stones and on the edges of, of the, uh, the courtyard. And finally, we'll go back and put in a little bit of uh, flock. This is just some standard green flock. We might mix it in with a bit of darker green flock, um, and that will give it a nice sort of uh, grassy look on the edges, but also between the stones. Taking our normal cardboard now, let's um, just begin by drawing out some stone patterns that we'll be cutting out with the scissors. Keep a little bit of a distance from the edges here so that you're not too close, uh, so we have some grassy area around the courtyard. Um, so let's begin in here a little ways. And you can just start drawing any size stones you want. Um, bigger, smaller, doesn't matter. Um, try to keep it looking somewhat random. Um, and that'll give it a nice effect later when we try to fill it in. Um, like I said, you don't have to be too careful about the exact shapes. We'll be cutting around these. Um, in a little bit, but make it look somewhat random, uh, vary your sizes. So there you have it, finished a bunch of random sized stones. What we can do now is to begin to cut them out individually and just glue them onto the base that we have provided. Before you start gluing, um, if you want to, this is a stylistic issue, if you want to um, get some rounded corners and some beveled edges, um, which would make it, I think, look a little sharper, what you can do is just take some sandpaper and just start to move along the edges to kind of bevel them out, flatten them out a little bit. Uh, corners, you can just work on the corners to round them off. Same thing, um, just keep on sanding them around. Make the corners nice, uh, clean it up and that will, I think, in, in the end, make the final product look a lot better. Now that we have our base here ready to go, let's take our uh, pattern that we have here and just start to cut out some of the stone blocks. So you can start here up on one corner and you don't have to be perfect, you don't have to be exactly on the lines, but just try to get in more or less um, what you had drawn. Like so. Now you can begin by just taking a little bit of white glue, stick some white glue on the back of here, and plop it down up in the corner of your field. So there's the first row that has been cut out and glued to our base. 
um, and I'll show you here uh, what we cut it out from. The reason I like doing it this way is because you have this as your pattern, um, and so you can follow it along as you go and just add the pieces out right onto here, glue them right onto there, um, and you don't have to worry about maybe not having the right sizes. Um, so this allows you, I think, a little bit more exactitude than if you were just using random size pieces. So I'm going to continue on here, keep cutting out the rest of these, um, and glue them down to our base, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. Here's what it looks like now when all the pieces are glued on. Um, as you can see, I mean, it's a bit varied, uh, but that's okay. Uh, just like any good cobbler or stonesmith, medieval stonesmith, um, you have to improvise a little bit if you run into some things where it doesn't quite fit. Um, but it gives it a more authentic look. So let's wait for this to dry before we start to put on some of the spackling. Once you have your courtyard now dry with all the stone pieces uh, glued down, uh, you can then take out your spackling. And what we're going to do now is just take a little bit of spackling, doesn't require too much, um, and begin to simply rub it across the front of the stone. So we'll put some on our finger like this and just start to rub it across the stones to give some texture to each one of those stones. So here's what we'll do, we'll just keep on rubbing until we cover all of them. And so here we are now, finishing up our last few stones here with uh, a bit of our spackling. Um, like I said before, you don't have to use too much, just enough to give a little layer of, uh, of roughness to each stone. And if you get some between the stones, that's okay. You just try to um, get a little bit of it away so it doesn't stick out too much. We'll cover that over with flocking um, and paint as we move on. But if you can see now, what this does is it gives some nice texture to each of the stones, which we will then use when we do some dry brushing. So there you go. All your stones are covered with spackling. Let's let that dry before we begin to do some painting with gray. The next step now, once we have our stones that are dry here with our spackling on it, is simply now to add some gray paint and spread it all across the entire board. Now don't worry about uh, getting this uh, all over inside of the cracks because we'll cover that up later. So you can more or less just slop it on and get a nice cover on the entire courtyard. Okay, so what we'll do now is we will just let this dry and um, that will be the base coat then on which we will do some of our dry brushing and start to add some colors to the stones themselves. So let's let this dry and come back to it in a couple minutes. All right, we put a second little coat of gray on there to make sure we covered everything. And if you look really closely now, you can see the beautiful texture that that um, has now taken on. The spackling has worked beautifully and the paint has covered it nicely so we have some great texture there to look like actual beautiful paving stones. What we're going to do now though however is to try and give a little more color variation because it is uh, all the same color gray. So we'll do a little bit of dry brushing now. And for this dry brushing we'll start out with just a little bit of brown paint and just a touch of reddish um, to hopefully give a little uh, weathered kind of uh, dirty look to it. So what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of the, the red and mix it in here with the brown uh, to give it a slightly reddish earthy tone that we can then use uh, to do some nice dry brushing um, across the stones. There we go, and now we've finished up with the dry brushing, and as you see now, what we've gotten is some nice color variations on each one of these stones, so it doesn't look so uh, homogenous 
And we've got some nice dirty look on the stones um, that will blend in really nicely with the green background. So basically we have given it a bit of an earthy, dirty look uh, that looks more like an actual real cobblestone. Of course, feel free to experiment with all sorts of different colors. You could use some uh, dark grays or even some lighter grays. Um, you could use more reds. Um, it's all up to you about the kind of look that you want. In this case, I want a nice earthy look, so this brown, uh, reddish brown will work really well. When you're satisfied with that, now it's time to move on to the uh, actual uh, flocking process and to do that let's start off by putting a little base coat of green here around the edge I like to get all the edges here and even a little bit underneath um, on the edges around here get that covered in a good uh, dark base coat of green so what we'll do is we'll start out here with some green base coat uh, and we will just begin by going around the edges um, and getting all of this nice and green and while we wait for our paint to dry, we can begin now by prepping our flock that we'll be using. Um, what I would like to do is actually make a little bit of a blended flocking here um, from a different, uh, a few simple steps video, we'll show you how to make uh, blended flocking, how to make each of these. And what we have is, is a very dark uh, green flock here and we have a very light olive green flock. Taken by themselves, they're uh, a bit too bright or a bit too dark but I find it's actually really good if you take equal proportions of each, blend them together, and that uh, will give you a really nice uh, variation uh, in the look of your flock that we can then use for our courtyard. So let's just begin by taking uh, a few pinches here. One, two, three, four pinches there, and four pinches here. One, two, three, four. Uh, mix them up then. Uh, so you may want to add brown or, or some yellows if you if you want a little bit of a, uh, a darker look or a lighter look. Um, in this case um, I'm gonna go with a bit of a darker look because I want to have uh, I don't want the the grass to stick out too much so maybe I'll take a few more uh, handfuls and pinches of the dark and just keep mixing that up um, and just keep this process going until you get a flock that um, looks good that you think uh, uh, basically you're comfortable with that you think will add to your terrain piece. Here's now the blended flock that we will be using. Um, now the risk here is even that this might get a bit too uniform so you might want to keep a little bit of the dark flock with you that you can use to sprinkle on um, to your courtyard in different places to give it a little even more varied look if this is even too uniform. Uh, if you have an airbrush uh, you can always go over it with a uh, dark uh, coat of paint um, and airbrush a few of the different places with some dark to give it a bit more variation. But we'll just use flock and we will use that uh, to give us the definition and variation we need. With our border dry now, we can begin to add our flock. Um, you can do this really in any way you want to, but I'm basically going to just start in the beginning and put, start uh, putting glue into these cracks um, and adding some flock and moving outward as we go. So let's begin by just putting some glue. A small bottle is helpful here. A small bottle, Elmer's glue or PVA glue is helpful. You can get in those cracks. And just start adding uh, a good amount of uh, white glue in these spaces and then let it just simply fill up those cracks uh, and that will be a nice base then to just start sprinkling some of our flock in there. And you can see now the glue is starting to really uh, work its way through these different cracks and fill all the spaces. Give it a few seconds to kind of work its way in, settle down. Um, and then what you can do is just take your flock now and start to sprinkle it in these different cracks and just let it cover that space and let it soak itself into the glue. Um, and when we are done with that, we'll let it sit for a couple minutes and then we can shake off the excess.
And while we let this sit here and dry, we can just go ahead and add glue to the rest of it and add the rest of our flock and we'll check in with you when that's all finished up. And here we have the entire uh, courtyard covered now and go ahead and actually just um, put your hand over it and push down uh, to make sure all of the flock gets down into the cracks and the crevices um, and then it can really get, uh, get in a good place and held down by that glue. So push down a little bit um, and make sure everything's sitting really nicely. Once you've allowed a few minutes now for the glue to dry, you uh, can now lift up your courtyard and sort of shake off some of the excess. Um, and you can go over with your hand even and sort of uh, smooth some of it out. Uh, a paintbrush might be helpful at this point. Um, if you do what we've done here and you've done it in segments, you're going to have to go back now and look and see if there's some places that you may have missed. Um, uh, here's a place here, here's a place here. Um, go back, fill those up with some glue and add a bit more flock uh, before you go on to do the edges. With your touch-up work complete, now you're ready for the very last step, um, which will bring us to a conclusion of this project. All we're going to do now is put some flock on the edges here. Um, and we've already base coated these with a nice green so we don't have to worry about being too careful and covering everything. But this is really an easy process. All you're going to do is just put some glue on here um, and use your finger to rub it in. And then take a little flock over here from your pile of excess and just sprinkle it on. And that should be enough to uh, get you a nice cover there. Um, and then let that sit and dry and you'll be finished. So let's get started and show you how that works. I like to do it in sort of smaller segments just to make sure I can uh, rub everything in, um, get the glue to cover the entire edge and the entire corner all the way down to uh, where it will meet the table, your gaming board. So there we go, rub it in with your finger, um, take a little bit of flock and just sprinkle it on uh, ever so lightly. And if you notice at some point that you don't have enough glue, just simply add a little more glue, rub it in with your finger, and you will become finished with it. So, take a look at that edge and that corner. Um, that is how it will look when you are finished. And I will continue on with this and just keep going around uh, the entire courtyard until we have it completely covered with the same color flock as the rest. And finally, a final shot of the courtyard with uh, a few houses around it and some hedges to make it uh, look like a uh, courtyard would look if it were incorporated into a village or into a town square. And there you go folks, a few simple steps for making beautiful stone and grass courtyards. Thank you for joining us for this episode of A Few Simple Steps here at Grey Army Gaming, where Grey can always play.